How do? JR here. Welcome to part two of how to build a Carrick model. Uh, in last week's episode, uh, we removed all the parts from the sprues, um, and, but we didn't do any cleanup on them. So this uh, episode is all about cleaning up those parts once you've taken them off the supports uh, and about dry fitting, because it realistically, it's actually one and the same thing. So for example, we shall take this piece. So this is the wing off the Carrick. Um, you can see we've still got the, the little burrs and things from, from where the touch points were. So that's fine. We've got a turret that goes into said wing and we've got the rear of the fuselage. So we're going to dry fit these three bits together, showing uh, sort of how we take off the support points and how we make sure that we've taken enough of those support points off. So we're going to start in the middle of this problem uh, with the actual wing. So we're going to use the sandpaper provided in the kit, bowl of water, uh, because you can dry sand with this sandpaper, it's a wet or dry sandpaper, but you will get a lot more longevity out of it if you use it wet. Uh, this will be enough um, to do the whole model if we use it wet, because we can sort of keep washing it out. So what I'm going to start with is trying to take off these the burrs that are along the edge. So it was on its supports like that, and it had lots of little touch points here. We've put them deliberately on this point here where it's supposed to be just a flat rounded face. So it's a nice, easy one to clean up. So we're just going to take our folded over piece of sandpaper, wet, and just very gently. This isn't taking any effort. We're not digging in here to, uh, to take this away. And that's, that's us. And then bit on this bit here. Just trying to maintain that sort of round chamfer, just use our fingers to feel that it's right. Just keep moving around. We genuinely do spend a huge amount of time on these models, making sure that we're putting these touch points in the least inconvenient places as possible. Um, and that sometimes means that we put more touch points on than we perhaps need, but we put them in places that are easier to remove. Because there might be a place that would be like, oh, if we, we could just put one touch point there and that would all be all we'd need for that part, but it's going to be really difficult to clean up. Um, so we've got some other ones, little little ones in there. So we could, we'll start off just by taking the knife back in, just cleaning that up. And I'm going to take my sandpaper, just put another fold in it, so I end up with a little flat section that will just go into there, and then we can use that just to tidy up around there. There we go. And we'll look on the back now. This back pin had some pretty big touch points on. Um, like we've said before, we try and put the touch points on parts that aren't eventually visible uh, because it doesn't really matter if they're not as pretty because you don't see them. Um, so there's a few just on this ring around here. We'll just catch those first. So this is where we need to start doing some dry fitting. So we could sand and sand and sand this away till we're blue in the face till it looks good. But this pin here isn't about looks. This is the this is the mechanical fixing into the rest of the model. We don't get to see it. So we'll take the uh, the rear fuselage. Now this is uh, the in-flight wing. So it is orientated with the landing gear box where the landing gear sits pointing to the rear of the ship. Um, so this pin is shaped so that it goes in. We see that's that's quite a nice fit. That's quite a nice fit. It's not, we don't want this to be tight. So this is held in with a five mil diameter, two mil deep magnet. This is gonna snap in with that magnet when we've glued the magnets on. So this just wants to be a relatively loose fit. We don't want it to be able to rotate. Uh, so that's quite nice. Um, so that's a pretty good fit. We'll take a little bit more off it. We'll check on the inside of this that there are no remnants of touch points or anything inside it because that might be the thing that will be stopping us and we'll just do a tiny little a little bit more of a tickle onto this we can just see a few little bits of touch points there so we'll just give that a rub down try and preserve as much of the shape it should do as i think so we just want it just to yeah that's nice that's going all the way in it's not it's, it's got a little bit of wobble, the magnets will hold that in really, really tight. It's not gonna rotate or sit, uh, sit out of line. That's really nice, so we like that. So we can put this bit aside for the time being. Now we're gonna look at the turret. Now, the turret had quite a few 
touch points on. And this is the Tough 2000 resin. So we've got to be a little bit more careful uh, with how we do this because this stuff is uh, a lot tougher. It's <sighs> Tough's a really odd word to use. Uh, it's Tough 2000 is the name of the resin. Um, it has a huge amount more um, strength to it. It's got a lot of plasticity to it so that you can bend it and bend it and bend it without it um, without it shattering, which makes it perfect for these sort of fragile little gun parts because you can drop them. They're, it's a very similar uh, material to ABS plastic. So it's got that sort of durability to it. So these touch points will take a little bit more effort to get off just because of the type of resin that, we, that we've made it out of. Just find them all. You'll, you'll always miss one and then you'll come around to undercoating it and as soon as you undercoat it, you'll spot it and you'll have to go back in with some sandpaper. <laughs> That's the always, always the same. There we go. Cool. So this is a push fit. There's no magnets involved here. There's basically two holes on the inside for these legs to fit into. So we're just going to check that they go in. Yeah, it's a pretty good. We'll just take a tiny bit off that. Just again, just a little tickle so we're not having to force it in. The other thing to remember is when you're doing your dry fit at this stage of your build, if you if you think that, oh yeah, that's that's just right. That's just right. It's not right. You want it to be a little bit looser than you eventually want it to be because you've still got to paint it. And a couple of layers of paint on each side of something will tighten that thing up a lot. So when you're dry fitting, always bear in mind that you are dry fitting with the idea that there's going to be two, three layers of paint in the mix. So if it only just fits or fits exactly how you'd like it to eventually, it's probably too tight. So that's now a little bit looser than I eventually want it, so that's perfect. So we'll bring our, bring our other piece back in. Pop that on, and then we can see we've got our turret. We can position the turret either way. They're nicely sort of symmetrical like that. So we can uh, position it round and put it in whichever way we like. And that's basically it. It's, it's quite laborious. Uh, it takes quite a long time to just to prep to prep each part. You've then got some quite complicated uh, parts like this where there's a large surface area to clean up these touch points for the front of the fuselage to fit onto. It's just patient, patient, a little bit of sandpaper, not going crazy with it, use plenty of water, it'll be absolutely fine. Cool, that's it for prepping parts. Uh, next will be magnets, see you there.